is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this, this is Talking Cowboys. Steve. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand on Elliott, plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. Welcome into a Monday edition of Talking Cowboys here on DallasCowboys.com, live from the training camp grounds in Oxnard, California, of course, presented by American Airlines. It's Training Camp 2021 rolls on here from the West Coast alongside Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips. I'm Kyle Yeomans, where we are just 31 days away, gentlemen, one month pretty much exactly from kickoff of the 2021 season and that week one matchup with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a Thursday night football game, but we have Thursday night football and a little Saturday afternoon football to talk about for the first time here on Talking Cowboys because the last time we had a show we were leading into the Hall of Fame game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then we haven't had a chance to catch up since the Saturday practice against the Rams. And like Mike McCarthy said, Rob, it was a, a week one and a half, really, of preseason football for this Cowboys team, and it was a beneficial one at that. Yeah, and I mean, because of that, in part, you know, they're, they're giving the guys basically three days off. You know, they're going to have a walkthrough tomorrow, but mostly just kind of wait wait room work and and film work today to clean everything up because it's I mean that was a quick 48 hours when you think about what they had to do going up against two teams uh, not live against the Rams but some but some good work mm -hmm. you know Mickey and I were at the 2015 joint practice out here <laughs> against the Rams and that was like a barroom brawl at times this one was like a pillow fight compared to that in terms of some of the skirmishes but I think you said it before we went on like it was just the right amount of physicality you know there were a couple dust-ups and all that but it wasn't anything where anybody I think was at risk of getting hurt and when you go up against a team that's been to the Super Bowl and a team has got some swagger like that's that's a good little test early in camp and I think we forget sometimes that we're early in camp mm -hmm. they've had five six padded practices that's it <laughs> one preseason game yeah they're wrapping things up here in Oxnard this week but there's still a long way to go yeah Mike should have uh Get a name to movie, right? 48 hours. He kept talking about 48 hours, <laughs> and it was a good 48 hours. Eddie Murphy. And, and, yeah, and uh, you know, and and I and I thought I I like what he said. He said this team improved a lot over the last 48 hours, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited about that. And I think you know it was a quick turnaround from as Rob said. You play on Thursday night in Canton, Ohio, you show up here Friday at 5 in the morning, and then by Saturday at 3 o'clock, you're practicing against the Rams. So they condent they put a lot of stuff into a short period of time, and, I, you know, I, th I, I thought it was good. I, I, I thought the guys responded. I thought he regulated their snaps very well, mm -hmm. didn't use the first-line offensive guys um, that much on Thursday, but they played on Saturday. So... Tyron Smith's out there, Lael Collins out there, Zach Martin's out there. You know, that offensive line looked the way it was supposed to look. Uh, I thought that was huge. It's huge for Garrett Gilbert to get some protection uh, and actually operate the offense. And then defensively, I thought, you know, they kind of held their own against the Rams. They played their top quarterback, Matthew Stafford, was yeah. out there slinging it around. We weren't sure how much he was going to do after he kind of uh, – irritated his thumb that had been bothering him uh, but he was out there and he was slinging it and you know he he completed some passes but they broke up some passes uh, to the point that at one point uh, Deshaun Jackson got PO'd because uh, <laughs> of um, I think it was Jordan Lewis like broke up a pass and yeah and he came up and he he like swung at the air and it's like oh okay I guess he's pissed <laughs> and then a few plays later, they connected on about a 40-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, they did. You know, and, and he got all fired up about it. But that's good. you you got to go against guys like that. And I, I thought it was really good work. Uh, and as Rob said, he, they were off yesterday, but they're just basically doing meetings and weights and stuff today and then the walk through tomorrow uh, and, and more meetings. And so – Really, just one more practice here, right? Yep. Wednesday. Wednesday. No, they're padded. supposed. To, I think they're supposed to do something maybe Thursday before they actually leave. 
Correct. I think it's going to be like a walk We won't through. be able to see it. We won't though. see it. Doubtful it's much of anything because yeah. they got a game the next It'll day. It'll be a meeting on the field. Yeah. And they've got a mock game walkthrough tomorrow, which I think we get to take a peek at. Yes, we do. Uh, we do. Which we have not done so far in camp. So that's it's Pretty not practice. Pretty excited but about that yeah, mock game. Sure though. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's something. What are we going to do with ourselves for three days? The cards, nothing, right? The cards and the bonnets will come out. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, you said, oh, boy, I guess he's pissed. I said that about Aaron Donald about three or four times mm-hmm. in that practice on Saturday. So how about Connor Williams, the people's champ? Yes. And fans are loving this. Like, you know, not backing down from two-time defensive player of the year. Winning some reps against him in order to get him to kind of the edge of being a bit frustrated. Yep. And I, I, I think Donald was trying to say, hey, don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if you if you go back and watch some of the times they've played the Rams, he's done some good things against him. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, the knock people knock Connor Williams for maybe his strength, and sometimes he gets overmatched a little bit physically at the guard position. But I thought that was a good example of of him holding his own in some of those reps because I, you know, Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, those are two of the best players you're ever going to go against this season at their respective positions. So like Mickey said, like that, that is good quality work against somebody besides your own guys early in camp. And kind of to add on to that, it wasn't even just the, the offense that got great work against defensive players. I mean, outside of Tom Brady and maybe Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford is up there in terms of quarterbacks that can pick apart a secondary. No doubt. With the way that he he controls the game and he throws the football and his, his talent level and his IQ of the game. And I think that was a great test for guys going up against Robert Woods, Cooper Cub, Deshaun Jackson with Matthew Stafford throwing in the football. I think the Cowboys' secondary really grew a little bit on, on Saturday, Mickey, because that's not necessarily what they've seen with guys like Garrett Gilbert and, and Ben DiNucci at quarterback, maybe right. with Dak in the middle of practices. But Matthew Stafford and those three guys were a, a great new challenge, and I think the defense grew from it. See, and that's one of the downsides of Dak being out. You know, Correct. we look at, oh, he's not working with his offense, he's not working with the receivers. Well, the defense is not getting to work against the top-notch quarterback, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you would like to see that. And, yeah, and I thought they got some good work against him. Um, they made some plays. He got them a couple times. Uh, you mentioned uh, Cup. Uh, they lost him, tracked of him a couple plays, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, number 10, you better, might want to cover him, right? Um, but, uh, uh, but other than a few times like that, I thought the secondary played well. Uh, at times, the defensive front got a little pressure on him, and the Rams' uh, offensive line is pretty good. So uh, it was good work for Randy Gregory to go up against uh, somebody else, Dorrance Armstrong. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just thought it was a, a, a really good day of work for them. And like Rob said, other than the little dust-up with mm-hmm. Aaron Dottle and, and, and Connor Williams, yeah, it was uh, – yeah, it was, and, it, and it got competitive, and that was good because that's what you want to see because this team needs to gain. You can't be, like, swagger, confident. You've got to gain confidence that you can do this. True. And, I, and I think that helped. I think it helped playing the game on Thursday, and, and, and it helped again uh, Saturday. So, as Mike McCarthy said, good 48 hours. It we was. Were, we were laughing about the picture on DallasCowboys.com <laughs> of the, of the dust-up with Connor and Aaron Donald and there's it's a wide shot and you can see Dak like 10 yards away in the end zone just kind of watching kind of looking at it feels like oh it's like yeah just stay stay over there yeah. stay over there <laughs> you guys don't go anywhere you guys take care of this i'll just kind of observe go go stand behind the porta potty over there by the fence and you know everything will be okay actually CD Lamb said the same thing he's like i just go the other way if it's two linemen going at it what mm-hmm. am i going to do <laughs> you know so yeah that was good um but that rams t- i'm telling you you look at this early projection of the NFC, and obviously Bucks, Packers with Aaron Rodgers back, the Rams are going to be in the conversation. With no doubt Cowboys about it. Because they've got – you add Matt Stafford to that group and, and what they have defensively, they're, they're going to be in the mix if they can stay healthy, even though they're dealing with an injury at running back themselves. You well, know, and that was a good point about Dak because if you look at the – it wasn't a dust-up, it was a brawl amongst themselves, the Giants. Daniel Jones jumped in there. Did he? Oh yeah, yeah he, he did. He, he that was gosh. one of the headlines, and 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 it, and and, and, it, and that was some of the backlash after. It's like, okay, yeah, I understand. I'm the quarterback. I'm not supposed to go get involved. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, you think? 
<laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> it was almost like what we saw later in practice. There was another little scuffle. It never got nearly to the point of the Aaron Donald and, and Connor Williams dust up. But uh, Tony Pollard with a carry to the near sideline was kind of uh, in a tussle with Kenny Young, the young linebacker uh, from L.A. And, and Young, it looked like they got a little tangled up on the sideline after the play, and Young actually threw hands at the face mask of Tony Pollard, and Pollard, of course, reacted accordingly. And Sean McVay was the one that got in between in that one, and so I thought that was kind of interesting as well. But, you know, and they 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 roughed up Pollard a couple times yeah, early in the practice, and, and it was uncalled for because the, they had already thudded up, and then somebody came from his blind spot and just blasted him. There were a couple of those late. See, I, I and was I on think s- he decided, okay, that's enough that's of this. It. I was on set with Kyle for most of our, the broadcast. Mm-hmm. When I got out there, a team, th- there were times when we were watching kind of the red zone seven-on-seven seven stuff, it didn't seem like it was just full competitive. It, it was. I'm not saying half speed, but it wasn't as – as live or close to live as you might expect. And then the team drills, though, were really good, Mm -hmm. really good. And and there were some times out there where there was maybe a little more excess physicality from the Rams in terms of the thud that that Mike had talked about. And they chose who they were going to hit because they didn't do that to Zeke. Yeah. Right? But when they saw 20 and 34 and 37, it was like like open game, right? And it's like, okay, I know what's going on. Defense had their fair share of licks on guys like Daryl Henderson as well, and I think they did a nice job of uh, covering uh, Robert Woods. But I, I do want to stick with the offense here, going back to the offensive line. I thought the, the the work from the offensive line and what they showed against a good Rams defensive front, especially with Aaron Donald in the in the fray, for the most part held their own with Aaron Donald out there. And if Aaron Donald was out there or was not out there, I felt like they were pretty good. Uh, to say the least. It wasn't even just average or holding their own. I thought even some of the second and third string offensive lines really showed out on on Saturday. Rob, what did you see from the the offensive front and, and the reps that you got to look at? Yeah, no, I thought it was good. Um I th- like you said, I thought once you get once you get them the group whole, they can be very productive together as a group and and so they've they've kind of been missing that full five at times in practice, they've been holding Zach out of some reps. They've been holding uh, Tyron Smith at times. And Connor Williams, we mentioned him earlier, he got some center reps with the first team. Yep. And that's that's going to help him get better at that position, even if he's not projected as the starter there. I know that people are talking about, well, what does this mean? They're trying to find depth at that position. Mm-hmm. They're trying to find a backup plan with Tyler Biotis, you know, going into his second year and Joe Looney not being here. I thought that was good work for him. Um and so, you know, offensively, they, they did a lot of good things. C.D. Lamb carried over what he's been doing out here to this practice with another team going going at him uh, out here in Oxnard. And I thought it was Michael Gallup's best practice at camp as well. Yeah, I think you so know, too. if 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 people want to know what does that mean, all they need to be asked is who's the backup center. Because they won't have an answer. But you know what I mean. No, I, mean, I know it, what know, they're thinking. You know, I know you what see, they're thinking. You see it in practice, and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Biotish is really good, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and he's so doing nothing wrong to, to the point they of losing need, a starting job. They need a backup center. And if they can pull this off with Connor Williams, then not only do you save money against the salary cap, you save a, a roster spot on the game day roster because you don't have to have one guy a backup center and another guy the backup guard. But if you can get somebody to do two things like they got spoiled with with Joe Looney being backup center, backup guard, and you only had to keep seven Mm -hmm. offensive linemen up, uh, yeah, it's it's beneficial. Now, will it work? And and they were not going to find out if it works until they give him some first-team reps against a first-team defense. Uh, and, and see if he can, he, if he actually can pull this off. Because we saw in the in the in the Hall of Fame game, he had a high snap one time, and it it screwed up the play. Mm-hmm. And then another time, he, he threw a knuckleball back there. I, I didn't think the the snap was ever going to get to Garrett Gilbert, right? And it, and, and speaking of Connor Williams, he's walking towards his uh, room right now. Hey, Connor. And uh, you want to so talk yeah, about it? he's got to you know he's, he's got to get used to keep yelling about those high snaps. Th- th- yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> come and squash me, right? Oh goodness. Uh, but yeah, so he's got to get those reps and see if he can do it. Because if he can't, then who's the backup center? Well, it, Farniak doesn't at times look like he's ready physically to do this. I, I think it's safe to say he's not. 
physically ready. I, as a seventh round rookie, would you expect right. him to be? No. And a, he was playing guard. He played a little center at, at Nebraska. Just but, a tiny bit. Yeah, though. and they, they moved him over there, and mm -hmm. we'll see if he can do it. And then Braylon Jones is undrafted rookie from mm -hmm. I th Houston, right? I thought yes. it would be potentially Connor McGovern, just based on how much he played. He played center at Penn State way more than Farniak or Connor Williams had. One year, though. I know, but I, I, he's done it. And that's why last year I thought, you know, if Joe Looney's not re-signed, he's the natural fit to slide in as kind of that swing interior backup. And they've just kept him at guard and let him mm -hmm. worry about that and try to progress there. Because when you think about it for him, he's had this is his first full off season as an NFL player. It's true. So maybe part of it is just let him focus on getting better at that position. I thought it was going to be Joe Looney. I still thought he would come <laughs> yeah, back and yeah. they would have to sign him to be the backup center. And then he goes to the Giants and realizes, I don't like doing this anymore. I'm going to retire. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you mean you're retired? It's, you're 30. Come oh, on. Oh, gosh. So Joe, Joe probably didn't like all the running judge makes him do. Yeah, that's true. It's like, that's what, true what, running do the what are we doing? He was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's like, JG, what are you doing? What are I, I got to run here? I thought I was just coming to be the backup center. So, I mean, this has been a conversation throughout the time in Oxnard, throughout the offseason, about the potential of Connor Williams making that switch to center. But I don't know if I've ever asked this question, and, and both of you can answer, but I'll start with Mickey here. How, how tough of a transition is that from a guard who has played sole guard the entirety of his career, college, high school, doesn't matter. Now he's in the NFL and he's got to make a switch from guard to center. That seems like it's a tougher switch than a lot of people might look at and see on paper. Well, I think the, the tougher part is, is, is uh, now you've got to control everything. You know, you've got to know what the defense is doing. You've got to make the line calls uh, for everybody. So you really got to have a good concept of what's going on. And then, you know, they're going to line somebody right up on your head and hit you as soon as you snap the ball. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be ready to go. Now, can it be done? Mark Stepnoski was a guard at, at Pitt, mm -hmm. and, and the Cowboys turned him into a Pro Bowl center. So That's a great point. He was, he, it can be done. Uh, but I think it's not done overnight. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, Step was a Pro Bowl center. Well, his rookie year, he didn't start a game until they were probably one in ten, mm -hmm. and and they put him in. They put him in at center because they knew that was kind of where they were going to go with him. One but, in ten. Ooh. Well, what a year. Yeah. No it, thanks. It was it was Owen. 0-8, oh, 0-9 and oh, and before they won that game mm -hmm. on Sunday night. And, of course, they would win the only game of the year on Sunday night uh, when we were right on deadline, right? <laughs> and in an old RFK with a, a press box that was so crowded, we well, were sitting like this, right? To, cause, so there wasn't enough room well, to stretch out because my shoulders were so big, You've right? told me oh, yeah. many times you've, you were rooting for an 0-16 oh, season. I wanted 0-16. Oh, yes. I wanted history. I said, well, I'm going to cover history here. The first year I have the this team on my own. And then they win a game, and I'm going, now it's just a bad season. <laughs> Rob, what would you think about the no, switch? Mickey nailed it. I mean, it comes down to you're the quarterback up front pre-snap. You make all the adjustments. You get everybody in the right checks. And I, I don't think that's a difficult transition for him because Mike McCarthy spoke about it the other day. They train the guards and the centers the same way. So, and he's been in this system for three years, so he knows what's going on. It's not like he's coming in. It's not like Matt Farniak's trying to do this year one first camp. I don't worry about that so much. I think what Mickey said, it's also it's, it's the added element of having to snap the ball, and then you've mm -hmm. got somebody right in your face. I'm sure that's an adjustment as well. But I don't. I think from a pre-snap standpoint, I, I think it's something he can handle. He's been around for a while. And and think about from a physical standpoint. There, there's a reason why uh, on on like snaps for kicks that they've changed the rule and you can't line head up on the on the deep snapper. Yeah. You know you got to beat to the side. Mm -hmm. And why are they doing that for safety? Well, on defense, they can put a 400-pound guy on your head, right? Right on and, top of and you, and they just pound the heck out of you as mm -hmm. you after you snap the ball. So, yeah, it's this, and then you got to come up and do this, and it's not easy. In terms of the timing, I feel like it's a it's vastly different compared to what it, it looks like on paper. Because I mean, whenever you're watching film and whenever you're actually looking at the play, it, it looks like a guy just doing the same thing. Except you have to snap the ball, then you have to re adjust yourself and then make a block immediately yep. with a one technique or a zero te technique right over the top of here. So you're, you're concerned about that position, and then 
once again, it reared its ugly head in the Hall of Fame game. You're concerned about who's that swing tackle. I was just yes. going to say, who that's, can that, come that's in, a bigger question right who now. Who can come in okay. and play that left tackle position or the right side? We have a fan question about that. Okay. okay. So we're going to take a break. And on the way back, we're going to answer some me the questions. question I was trying to answer. the question answer. you were trying to get to <laughs> when we come back with more Talking Cowboys here on DallasCowboys.com. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizol for freedom from glare. Three cutting-edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more. Do more. Essilor. Back to Talking Cowboys. Whether you're watching from home or you're cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor can do for you. See more. Do more Esslor on Talking Cowboys. Mickey Spagnola, Rob Phillips, Kyle Yeomans with you. Special shout out to Chris Beam and William Boykins, also in our podcast tent, holding it down and doing a great job throughout all of the shows over the course of training camp. Some of the hardest working people here, I would say. Absolutely. Without Definitely question. So. They're so. earning their three square meals. They're <laughs> <laughs> Are they square? <laughs> They're square. They're square. <laughs> Pretty square. Okay, so we've got some time now to answer some fan questions here on Fans on the 50. I was complimenting Fans Pete. on Everybody. the 50. All right, here we go. Going right into your question. Jake asks, have you seen Terrence Steele on the left side at all? Reporting on Inseki and seeing his limited snaps against Pittsburgh is troubling in his opinion. Hashtag Mickey, who is the swing tackle? We don't know yet. Okay, <laughs> it, it has not emerged uh, as a definitive uh, person. Uh, Naseki struggled uh, at left tackle uh, in the game against Pittsburgh and in limited time. In too. limited time, and you know he's he's out there, and you know he's a veteran. They're not going to overdo it, but they got to first and goal at the five, and second down and third down, he missed his blocks. Uh, and it's like, okay, don't tell me we're we're still here with the cams, right? Cam mm-hmm. Irving and Cam Fleming that they have both <laughs> cammed out. Um, and, and, and so Steele has primarily played right side uh, on the second team at tackle, mm-hmm. but they did get some snaps on the left side. Uh, and then the other problem there is you drafted a guy in the fourth round, Josh Ball, and it sounds like he must have a high ankle sprain because – uh, when McCarthy uh, talked about his ankle, he said, yeah, he'll probably be out a couple weeks. So mm-hmm. normally if it's just a regular ankle sprain, usually it's not a couple weeks. So um, He said maybe Houston. Yeah, maybe. But it didn't sound – He didn't sound hopeful. <laughs> he said multiple weeks. And he's he's been out for about a week now. Yes. So And we haven't seen him. Not, it's uh-uh. not like he's walking out yeah. there watching practice. 
Uh, so he's getting, you know, rehab therapy. So the odds of him winning this job is is are, pretty remote at yeah, this point. Yeah. And you know, and and what you're hoping is if they have to bring in another tackle, that they protect that guy. They don't just say, okay, you, you got the job like they started last year, and and it's like, no, you got to put a tight end over there. And mm-hmm. then to me. The, the answer I can give the guy is, in my books, if something happens to Tyron and L.C., Zach Martin's going out to tackle immediately. Tackle. Immediately. <laughs> I ain't waiting <laughs> ten weeks before I put him out there, right, or however long they waited before they made that change. And I think the reason they somewhat waited is they still hadn't had uh, confidence in McGovern to take care of the guard spot. But yeah. once he came along and they said, okay, look, He's a better guard than whoever I'm putting out at tackle. And so we can move Zach out there. And, and so, to me, that's the answer to the question right now. I want to disagree with you, but my answer is in stone. It's on the website right now. That was the mailbag question today, and I said same thing. Zach is the best option. You know, if you, mm. Especially if it, we're talking about a long-term absence, God forbid, at one of the tackle spots at some point in the season. McCarthy didn't want to do it last year. He finally did it. And you know what? The line played its best that it had yes, at it any did. point in that season. In the running game, there was about a three-game stretch where they were getting about 150 yards rushing per game before Zach got hurt again on Thanksgiving. So that solved things. Because And, and give credit to Connor McGovern because he stepped in at right guard and did a nice job. So Mickey's right. It's about kind of trying to get your best five out there. And if you do have to change out two spots, then fine. Um, I, if, we're, if we're basing it off of the current backup swing tackle options, I would still have to give the edge to Ty Naseki just based on experience. You know, he, he's 36 years old. He's been doing this a long time. Terrence Steele, I think, is getting better. I think we've seen some things, some signs that he's improving, but I, I would have to give the edge to the veteran there. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's not uh, set in stone by any means. And then the other guy that they've used is Brandon Knight, but only because mm-hmm. they were down a tackle. They needed another tackle to help out. Yeah. So they've moved him because he was getting the majority of his snaps uh, as a guard. They were trying to give him a chance to make it as a guard. Uh, and then when they lost ball, it was like, okay, we're, we're short on tackles. You're going to have to take some snaps second or third team at, at tackle. And so – yeah, I mean, gosh, but, you know, last year was just unbelievable that you were trying to uh, exist at the tackle position with an undrafted rookie and a second-year guy who had played basically two games in the NFL previously. Gotten one start. Brandon yeah, Knight, one right? start, right? And it's like, golly, that's almost like throwing your hands up. And a backup quarterback. And a backup quarterback. <laughs> and the backup I- to the backup quarterback. <laughs> it was a nightmare. A nightmare for Kellen Moore, I'm sure. I will, I will say, you know, a couple of the, those two red zone trips that Garrett Gilbert had, a couple of his those plays, you might, you could nitpick and say you got to have a clock in your head and get the ball out. It's true, but yeah, it, the protection was not clean in that game, and and it honestly it got a little bit worse, I think, as as they went down the depth chart at quarterback in that game too. One one. Extra thing to Jake's point whenever he said limited snaps for Ty Inseki during the Pittsburgh game, and, and I kind of mentioned this in passing, but I looked further into it, and I know how we all feel about pro football focus and their grades, quote-unquote, because they're not normally the best, but I still think this says something about the, the, the game that Ty Inseki had. He had seven pass-blocking snaps. His grade at the end of the game was a 0.0, 0 yeah. grade which means out of the seven snaps that he had, he had the worst possible grade that you could potentially have on PFF, which is saying something. Yeah, yeah. That's a struggle. And, and, and Terrence and, Steele, by the way, was a 66.4 in terms of pass. And there was one, I think, I think Gilbert took a three-step drop, but even if it's a three-step drop, the guy was on him in I three agree. steps. No, I agree. And then the other time, he didn't pick up the guy that was blitzing. It's yep. like you're it's a true. veteran. You should know what you're doing. Got to know to to be able to slide out. And you see that blitzing uh, linebacker, I believe, is what it was. Okay. And, and you know when you, when you look at those things, all you got to do is look at to see how much they got paid, because the contract <laughs> will tell you what they think of the guy. I'm sorry, and he's basically true. on a veteran minimum, and he's 36 years old. Yeah. You're, so you're not wrong. so it's not like okay, he's making so much money, we got to keep him, right? 
Yeah. And it's the same thing at the safety position, not to stray away, but most of those guys they brought in, they're all on one-year deals for basically minimum Mickey, with a minimum signing bonus. Well, it, it, look, just – as much as they stuck with Terrence Steele last year, you got to think they feel like he can do this eventually and, and get better and better. So, I, you know, maybe they may be crossing their fingers that he can just continue to get better in these practices and, and win the job, you know, as a second-year guy that they've invested in. We'll see. I mean, Naseki has way more experience. And they're, they will keep an eye out, I'm sure, once final cuts happen. The problem is if you've got a good backup tackle, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. They are hard to find. Um, just you know, just off the couch. I go back to Michael Irvin talking about the backup tackle, and he goes, "Can you just stand there and let me count one, two, three? That's all you got to do, right? <laughs> one, two, three. I like that. And and they couldn't do it. And Can't I don't do I don't know if he was remarking about Chaz Green, who by the way he was on that Pittsburgh roster. Is he? Yes. Okay. Mm. Mickey, you mentioned the the one year deals for some of those guys in the secondary at safety. Our next question, John asks, do we see Malik Hooker in pads this week, and potentially does he get some snaps against the Cardinals on Friday? I can't imagine that he would get one practice in pads and they'd throw him in the game on Friday. Because At all? The only, he hasn't done it yet, That's right? True. And the only chance you got is Wednesday. Agreed. And he's coming off a torn Achilles. Mm -hmm. So, um, which, by the way, I was watching uh, Keanu Neal and um, – Demonte KZ warming up for the, the practice against the Rams, and they were doing their Achilles stretching things still out there. Three guys that have had that injury. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he may, they're ramping him up. He didn't practice against the Rams, but he's, he's doing more field work, and so if he doesn't practice Wednesday, I, I would think he's back in there on some level by the time they get back from Oxnard. But, yeah, I don't, I don't expect him to play against Arizona. Sticking with the secondary, Bluff City Cowboys, who always ask great questions, by the way, uh, with the close battle at the cornerback position, does special teams' ability give guys like C.J. Goodwin an advantage over guys fighting for the fifth and maybe sixth spots overall? Well, C.J.'s on this team as a special teams guy. I mean, you, he's listed as a corner, but and he does take some reps there, but he's – He's a, basically a captain on special teams. There is talk, though, of Maurice Kennedy being just as talented in terms of special teams work. Yeah, but you know, Maurice Kennedy has started games in the league it's at, good point. at cornerback, and I think maybe people forget that a little bit. You know, he's been a, mostly a reserve, but that being said, he's probably the biggest surprise of camp. You know, take out CD and just how spectacular he's been. I mean, that that's, doesn't really I feel shock like that's us. That's not really a surprise. That's no. more of an expectation. But I mean, the level that he's been at has been yeah, unbelievable been awesome. at times. But I, in terms of a guy that's really jumped out at you, yes, he's got to be right there. And right? I and I think to answer the guy's question is, don't count CG, CG, CJ <laughs> in the number of corners you keep. Yeah. he's in a category of his own. It's special mm -hmm. teams. You know, you put him over there. Uh, and then find the next corner. So if you're looking at corners right now, you know, Kennedy's probably the, the fourth guy in, in my books. Uh, if you're looking at it, I, from the way he's performed in the slot, and he does have some special team skills, uh, you know, Calvin Joseph is coming along, but I don't know that he has shown out to the point where – uh, you know, he's the next man up at the cornerback position. Who is one, two, and three? You said he's fourth. I just wanted to ask that to see who your one. Oh, two, I three still are. think it's 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 um, Diggs, Brown, Brown, and and George, and George Lewis. Lewis. Okay, and and no challenge from Kansas. Well, yeah. here's a well, a little bit. I but think so too. I think this. They didn't play Jordan Lewis in the Hall of Fame game. Not at all. He hasn't, so he hasn't practiced a ton either. Yeah, He's but there's been, a reason he wasn't out there, yeah. right? Because I think they, just like Donovan Wilson, I think they think, okay, we know who they are. we got to find out, find the next guy. Mm. Uh, and, and so um, I think they're still and, – and Jordan Lewis was back out there working with the first team during the practice. Held uh, his own, too. And held his own. So, uh, you know, and they paid him a little bit of money, so they got to see that one through. Um from a salary cap standpoint, three years, thirteen and a half million. Yeah, so seven and Kennedy's a half. Kennedy's trying to make this team as maybe the next guy that can go in the slot. You know, and Anthony Brown can play in the slot too. By the way, he has started games there. So if somebody gets hurt, you know, they can they can put him in there 
or a Kennedy in there, or they can put Brown in there if one of the other corners steps up. But I don't know that Joseph or Nishan Wright have stepped up enough to suggest they're the next guy up. Mickey, Mickey, you're looking at it kind of what the depth chart should look like week one, yeah, September 9th. And I don't disagree with you, but I, if I'm ranking just based off our eyes out here, the cornerbacks, it's Trayvon Diggs and then it's Maurice Kennedy for me. Just wow. in terms of the plays he's made. And, <clears throat> you know, if this keeps up, I don't know how you keep him off the field. And that's not to say Anthony Brown has had a good camp. He's, he's done some really nice things out here. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of Jordan Lewis um, because, you know, he's been dealing with a little bit of an injury. But, you know, and Kelvin Joseph has flashed. Nation Wright has flashed a little bit. But <clears throat> Maurice Candy makes a play in every practice. If it's not a pick, he makes a play on the ball and he, from that slot position. But they haven't played him outside. Well, maybe they don't have to. You know, maybe that's his role. But what if one of those, what I was looking at is what if somebody outside gets hurt, who's the next corner that's going in? It, it's probably, probably Kelvin, Kelvin Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. yeah. But but he needs to pick it up. You know, he looks like a second-round rookie right now. And Nashawn Wright, it looks like a little final pick in the third-round rookie. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, you know, Although Nashawn Wright led the has, team in tackles he hasn't, in the game. <laughs> yeah, because his guy was uh, catching passes. It's a good point that we kind of pulled that up during draft coverage. <laughs> I think it, when he faced Simi Fajoko, it was like, yeah. oh, he led the team. Yeah. He led Oregon State in tackles against Stanford. Oh, wait, it's because Simi Fajoko kind of torched him on multiple occasions, and he tackled him down the field a little yeah. bit. Or got to the end zone, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, he that doesn't count as a tackle. Heck but, of yeah. a game, right? He had yeah, he a did. performance in he that did. game. Yeah. Uh, any surprise veterans that need to have a big next couple of weeks before roster trim downs? Surprise <sighs> veterans. I mean, that's kind of. I don't know about surprise. Well, we mentioned Ty Nasecki. Ty Nasecki, yeah. That job is up for grabs, mm -hmm. based on what we've seen. Um, that's a good question. I mean, there, there's no veteran that. I mean, it's like, oh, if they don't do this, they're getting cut. I, you know, the, many, only, the only place I would think there could be some competition is the fourth and fifth wide receiver, just, okay. just from a cap standpoint. And mm. neither Noah Brown or Cedric Wilson are making that much money. I think they're both at like $2 million. 2.1. Yeah, 2.1. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to save a bunch of money. You'll save a million, but that's not worth – cutting somebody for a cap reason. I just think there's been a gap between four and five and then six. Right. I yes. mean, they, they've both been productive in camp, in, in the game. Special teams. Oh, special special teams. consistency as well. Yeah. Because Malik Turner will show up, yep. and then he'll disappear. disappear. Same thing with Osirius Mitchell. Yes. I mean, overall, those two have continued to be consistent. I'm, those yeah. guys are chasing them. It's hard to see – either guy not making this team. So that's, other than that, I mean, there's no veteran on the offense that's going to get knocked out of there, right? Well, you've got all your starters returning. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, when you go down the depth chart, there's some, the backup quarterback position. What, you know. Yeah, but they're not really veterans. Well, Gilbert Gary Rush. Gilbert's been around. He's still competing against the rest of the league. Right. You know, and, and I think he's had some good days lately. Yeah, but somebody else would have to show up. Uh, on a waiver wire that got your attention, and I, you know that's that's a couple of weeks away with their budget too. Yeah, yep. with their budget. with their budget, which you have to factor in. Um, I'm I'm trying to go down the roster and see. I mean, I think you know the safety position to me is still interesting. You know, they signed Curse in the off season. Yeah, and, somebody in there is not going to make it. You know what what do they do there? Israel Mukwamu, you know, I I would think makes this team, but how many safeties can you keep? You know, that, that's an interesting spot, too. Yeah, because think about it. I mean, if, if you went low on safeties, Keanu Neal can still move back there and play, right? Yeah. It's good. But can you keep KZ, Curse, and Malik Hooker? I guess, you, and, and then Donovan Wilson. And Mukwamu. And Mukwamu. Who, I guess you can, he can flex. He could. positions. Is that five that I just yes, that yeah, would be read five. off? Five. Yeah. So you can keep five safeties. Mm. And they got to wait on corners. You keep, and they're going to have to wait on Hooker uh, to see what he can do. I mean, it, it's no joke coming back from that ruptured Achilles. No, after taking time off and not really having an off season, working on your own. Yeah, I mean, coming in and and having training camp would be nice, but like you said, and we we answered in the first question, it's not really uh, not really possible for him to maybe get out there, at least during the camp. 
portion that's in Oxnard. And obviously the numbers at uh, inside at defensive tackle are, are strong. But Tristan Hill, they have that option to just keep him on pup to start mm-hmm. the season I at think six they're, weeks. They're going to keep him in their hip, so, too. hip pocket. So you know, it's not a situation where oh he might get cut. They can they can keep him on pup. Um, if he's I don't not ready. I don't know why. And and I want to bring this up because I don't think this would happen. But I I feel like a lot of people listening would maybe initially their first thought would be a guy like Jalen Smith. There's no way no, that no, happens no. until later down the road. I mean, if it ever happens. Yeah. I mean, he's a starter. I agree. <sighs> I mean, okay. Right I just now, wanted to address you know, it. That's all look, I wanted to do. Was he perfect last year? No. no. But he made 150-some tackles. Mm-hmm. And, and I see him more engaged this year, meaning he doesn't look like the independent contractor I, would, I thought he was. He, he's He's mingling with the team. He's he's patting guys on the back. He's he's being more of a leader instead of just being out there solo. At least he's being me. vocal, yeah. Yeah, and now the only thing he's got to do is when they're down thirty to seven, and he makes a big tackle and he does his little swipe thing. It's like don't be celebrating <laughs> your tackle in, in in the context of what's going on with the team. There was an interesting point in the practice that we saw against the Rams and we had actually had a replay of it because I thought it was so intriguing but he made a really nice read on a run play Daryl Henderson was rolling out to the right on a a little sweep and Jalen Smith blew it up at the line of scrimmage might have been a tackle for loss and he kind of kept running and he looked like he was going to do the whole swipe he even I mean oh he stopped and then he and then he just paused and he he put his hands up and he walked away I, I don't know if that's a sign to come or if that's just him thinking, oh, it's practice. But at the same time, maybe it was a sign of saying maybe the swipe is in the rearview mirror. And he's playing. That was his like way of saying. Selective swiping? Right. Selective swiping. <laughs> and, and, and he's playing the position he should be in. It's middle linebacker. He's not yep. a weak side linebacker. Well, look. He can't run and cover a running back or a, a tight, tight end. end. I could be wrong, but when they opened up in – their defense, first snap against the Steelers, they had three linebackers. I yes. did. Yeah, and, and he for the was first one of three them. plays. Leighton Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, Micah Parsons. And they're not going to do that all the time, you know. And, and they've got enough, enough versatility with the linebackers that they don't have to use them on the nickel if they don't want. Like if it's no. a just definite passing situation – you know, he doesn't have to be out there. Now, if they want to play nickel and, and it's still, like, second and, you know, short or something, they they can leave him out there against the run. I want to see him going forward. I don't want to see him going backwards. I like it. Middle linebacker, that's where you can do that. One other position, if we're talking about veterans, you know, what do they do at tight end? You know, Jeremy Sprinkle, they signed him to be, you know, kind of that belldozer role. Mm-hmm. Sean McCune continues to make plays, and he's no belldozer. Well, I'm just saying, that, you know, <laughs> the thing the thing is, if Sean McCune steps in and is the third tight end, because that's the way things may be progressing based on what we've seen out here. Mm-hmm. How do they use that? How, what does that mix look like? And and Alana Lewitt at fullback could be an interesting fourth tight end slash extra running back. H back do a little bit of everything now. If indeed that neck injury is not significant, go ahead, Nick. And we just found out that he's got a neck injury, and it looked like uh, it was going to take some time. Mm-hmm. So we'll find out maybe more about that. Uh, that cropped up when Sunday, and we hadn't asked Mike McCarthy about it. It came out of the game, but yeah, I yeah. guess he wasn't. He, I didn't see him out there against the Rams. No, so. I, I don't think he was. And Sprinkle, you know, for the body type he is, he's not what I thought he'd be, you know. And um, and he's he doesn't look like a guy that's going to do a lot of blocking for you. And your third tight end has to do some blocking and be able to get down the field. And McKeon has showed uh, some ability to do that. Yeah. And, and he benefited from the time he got to play last year. He can plays down the field as a pass catcher. Yeah, yeah he has yeah. a couple different times. So, so yes, yeah, and I don't look at – I mean, what year well, sprinkle? He was signed as a as a run blocker. That's that's really where he's made his money in sprinkle, the NFL. Six year guy, yeah, something like that. Fifth, yeah, fifth year guy. I guess that makes him a veteran. Sure, I mean it's more of a veteran than yeah. Sean McCune. But I'm sure. What did he sign? A one year deal for minimum. Yeah. Yep. 
Not a ton of money. Say to, no more. To throw Just around. Trying to there throw some names out there. I'm trying to answer the <laughs> trying question. Trying to find uh, some veterans. Yeah, trying right? to get yeah. some guys to, to be surprise cuts. All right. Let's take our second break. Whenever we come back, we're going to take a look ahead at the week that is in store in Oxnard, the schedule for the Cowboys, and maybe even peek a little bit at the Arizona game in weeks or week number one, I guess, officially of the NFL preseason when we return with more Talking Cowboys. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. Our Land Run package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys training camp returns to the star in Frisco starting with Cowboys Night presented by American Airlines on August 16th. Watch the Cowboys practice and enjoy free activities at the star beginning at 4 p.m. Fans have the chance to catch the three additional practices August 20th, the 27th, and the 28th. Admission and parking are both free. Visit the star in Frisco.com. For details, So the Cowboys returning to Oxnard starting next week after they take on the Arizona Cardinals in preseason week one. Returning to Frisco. Oh, did I say Oxnard? Yeah. Okay, I meant Frisco. See, Oxnard's on the brain. Well, because you want to stay here. Yeah, the weather's so fantastic. I mean, I'm wearing <laughs> long sleeves and, and pants, and it's four, or what is it, 11 o'clock? No. Some almost. friends took me out to dinner last night, and we ate outdoors. Nice. In downtown Ventura. Wow. That tells you how nice it is. I didn't get an invite. That's fine. It's cool. It's been cold at night, too. (laughs) Fog rolling in, man. There was a little heat lamp above us. I'm just saying, it's been been not Texas. Did you know? Did you know? Have you been to Ventura yet? This year, no. They have blocked off Main Street. It's a a pedestrian walkway now. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Because they have allowed, sort of like they've done other places, they've allowed the restaurants. To move out into the streets and put outdoor seating. That's great. That's a great little area right there. It reminded me of how cool it is out there. Because Ventura, by the way, I'll give you a little travel report here. Uh, it's we like got time. A, We're going a full hour today. It's like <laughs> it's like in a it's like in a 1970s time warp that old downtown there, which they should not spoil. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of keep it that way. Don't bring in a bunch of condos, and uh, they've got local businesses there, places right on the to water. eat. Yeah, and it's yep. not far. Like it's three blocks from the water, and it's just it's just a great little downtown. Kevin Costner's hometown. Is it really? Yes. Wow. He came to practice a few years ago. And now he I'm jealous. A, he had a place, and I think it was in Carpentiera, which is right next to Ventura. Before you get to Santa Barbara. He had a. As a matter of fact, I think one year the Joneses stayed that at at his house. One year he was in town with his band playing while we were out here. 
in Ventura. Kevin Costner? Yes. I, it might have it might have been at the county the county fair. Yeah. That's so cool. And they didn't have a county fair this year. No. Oh. no. That's a bummer. He's Stupid Mickey Spagnola. He's Rob Phillips. I'm Kyle Yeomans. This is Talking Ventura here on DallasCowboys.com. That's right. Um, what are some of the things that we're looking forward to this week? I mean, of course, the preseason game is Friday. It's a really slow week compared to what we have had here in Oxnard. Just the one padded, or we think it's going to be a padded practice on Wednesday. And they've only had five so far, correct? Five or six. Five yeah, or and six. And I bet if it is padded, it'll be a lighter one a since light they're one. playing on, on Friday. Um, what is something you need to see from this team this week going into well, the look, game Friday? And, and we haven't talked about this except for him being a pedestrian watching. Um, just where Dak Prescott is. Mm. Um, you know, I got a better understanding of his injury, uh, how it occurred. Uh, and where it exactly is. And um, so I could use Rob for my, my model here. My back hurts could. today. Don't, uh, don't. It, but it's, I'll do it on his left arm instead of his right arm. All but right. the muscle he hurt Be gentle. is right here. Okay. So there's a back muscle that comes up like this, and there's a, a little string of it, and it ends up underneath your armpit. And... Evidently, when, and I remember seeing the throw, he had a weird, like, Hail Mary throw where he threw the ball sky high, and he did it from a bad uh, arm slot mm -hmm. angle. and Kind of contoured his body a little yes, bit, didn't and, he? Yes, and he didn't have his feet right, and, and that's what caused the injury. It wasn't overthrowing, like, oh, his arm's sore because he's had so many throws. He wasn't throws. ready from. Yeah, he wasn't ready. And, and, no, it was that one throw. And my understanding is when they said a few days, they should have said a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they basically have checked uh, with some baseball teams because it's a pitcher injury that's common. And it, usually they shut down a pitcher two to four weeks when that happens. Mm -hmm. So we'll see when he gets back out there. Now, I did see him on Friday, I believe it was. He was rehabbing on the field, mm -hmm. and he had that big, heavy medicine ball, and he was doing these things that go side to side with it. He wasn't throwing the medicine ball. It's heavy, That's right? That's good. But he, was at least, <laughs> he at least had the, 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 the sideways motion range of motion going pretty well now some mike said he did some light throwing with a light object light objects i i, I think it might have been that wiffle ball you know those yellow balls that they were rolling out and guys were picking them up tennis ball it wasn't a tennis ball it was bigger than a tennis ball it wasn't it as was big an actual wiffle ball? it wasn't any bigger than maybe a 12 inch softball but it wasn't they're, they're softballs are they softballs? Yeah, they're softballs. Oh, okay. thank you, Chris. And, 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 and maybe he was just getting the motion to try to, to do it, hmm. um, but they're not heavy. So it wasn't like he was throwing a football. Yeah, and he, to correct, I think people thought he was out at practice doing some throwing on wow. Saturday. He was not. It, we have not really seen him throw, throw at all. It's been Wednesday will be two weeks since he removed himself from practice early and got that precautionary MRI. So – you know, I, I don't think they've ruled him out so of this, the preseason. You're talking this Wednesday, two weeks. This Wednesday will be two weeks. I bet, he, I, bet he's, I bet he's another week away. I, and we said that when it happened, it wouldn't shock us if we didn't see him throw in practice until we got back from Oxnard. That's definitely a possibility. I don't, you know, forget Arizona. Um, they, maybe they, Houston. Maybe. 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 They, yeah. they, they have not ruled that out. But the ultimate – prize there is week one September 9th against the Bucks. They're and gonna, if not you know, they, you know the, the, they talk about the dress rehearsal being the third game mm -hmm. uh, maybe out of necessity it'll be the fourth <laughs> game right because maybe Backed that's up against the because Jaguars. even after that you still have a week and a half before the opener that's right great point yeah. and I think he wants to and I think they think there's some value for him in just getting out there for a few plays and running the offense I mean you know he's done it a little bit in camp but that was the first padded practice where he took himself out yep and so he had a couple of days where he was running team drills in training camp. He didn't do that in the off season. So can't forget about the fact of how much football he missed last year and how preseason could give him a little bit of benefit, even though it's only a few snaps. Not for sure that's going to happen, but I think they're still optimistic it could. I thought McCarthy, he, he made a point um, 
late last week, and I can't remember if it was before we went to the Hall of Fame or after, he said it's not as important of him playing, it's important of him playing with who he's playing with. It's a great point. Meaning, you know, he can probably take care of himself, but how are the wide receivers on the same page mm -hmm. with him? How and, and Mike's a big guy on cadence, right? You know, his cadence with the offensive yeah. line. And just getting back out there and seeing the field. We forget he did not play the last 11 games last year and basically was rehabbing and didn't do much teamwork. He did throwing, but not that much teamwork in OTAs in the minicamp, right? So he kind of needs to just kind of get out there and see the field again when you're not used to seeing it. So I've got a two-parted question here. The first part is so neither one of you guys are even remotely worried about his potential availability for week one, right? I am not. Not based on I'm, what we've heard. I'm no. not either. I, I think 31 days away, as I mentioned at the top of the show, there's plenty of time for him to be ready to go f going into week one. So if, it, if, if Cowboys Nation's out there freaking out, Let's not freak out just yet. You second, know, and, and the other, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, second, second part, part of this part, question, yeah. are you worried he will miss the entire preseason and not get any snaps it going could, into that it, week? It could happen, I think. I think so though, there is some I think at worry. least a week. You see, they're, they're fortunate this year that you don't finish the preseason on Thursday and play the following Sunday, yep. right? There, there's another week in there. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the Cowboys got a little bit jobbed because <laughs> they got a, they got a yeah i wasn't going to use the s word there um, <laughs> that's i don't know if that's the one i was worried about yeah, you saying okay. yeah, either uh, one. yeah <laughs> right there was another one uh, uh, one of jerry's favorites because because they've got to play the last preseason game on a sunday mm. right uh, i think the tampa bay buccaneers play their last one Friday or Saturday. I think it's Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. So they get, you know, they got an extra day, and they don't have to travel. Uh, but at least you've got that other week in there before you got to start preparing for that first game. Unfortunately, they got to do it on a short week. So um, that factors in that they have that extra bonus week in there before they play the first game. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't rule it out in preseason – but again, if if he needs to not play in preseason in order to make sure this thing is not going to be aggravated, then so be it, because that's the thing. That's what they're, I wouldn't say concern, but that's what they want to focus on is don't do anything to aggravate this. And as Mike continues to say, make it a bigger deal than it already is. So they so. play the last preseason game August 29th. Yep. They mm -hmm. play on the ninth. So that's like 12. It'd be a total of 10 days. 12 days. There's 31. Is there 31 days in August? Yes. No. 30 days. Just in 30. August. Yes. Okay. So yeah, 10. Or, or if for some reason oh, you're talking about in July, there's 31 days in July. Yeah, 30 in August. Or you can or, flip it around. I'm I'm so mixed up. And like what you originally said, if he could get in a couple snaps against Houston, then you got almost three weeks right until the opener. There right. are 31 days in August. We have now figured out the calendar. <laughs> 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so 11, 10, 11 days. So they have 11 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Still and a oh, long by, time and, to go. And, and oh by the way, if I remember correctly, um the first cut down, it's only 5 guys, but it's August 17th. So it's next Tuesday, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Next Tuesday and we've got one more show from here. That'll be Wednesday, so we've got a little bit of time in between. We've got the game, of course, throughout the, the, the weekend. Mickey Spagnola, I, maybe Rob Phillips, definitely Mickey will be on countdown to kickoff uh, on Friday for the game against Arizona. So We might have to recruit coverage. Rob. Rob, you want to be on the show? Whatever we need. That's, okay. well, that's my motto that's, around that's here. That's a great motto. Whatever to, to you guys need. About. Come up with a good package. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for that right now unless somebody tells me. Oh, goodness. Hey, whatever whatever need. you need, right? Yeah. yeah, there we go. But that's going to do it for us here on Talking Cowboys. Tons of fun still to be had from Oxnard. We've got one more show from the tent. It'll be Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Central time. So uh, be sure to catch that one on DallasCowboys.com. For Chris Beam, William Boykins, for Rob Phillips, Mickey Spagnola, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next time here on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!